Hello, and welcome to the Federal Railroad Administration's Rail Program Delivery video series. I'm Anthony Thomas, and I'm pleased to introduce Betty Soros, Senior Attorney with the FRA. Hello, everyone. In this video, you'll learn all about the basics of the Davis-Bacon Act. And no, not that bacon. The Davis-Bacon Act is named after these guys, Senator James J. Davis and Representative Robert L. Bacon. The Davis-Bacon Act, or DBA for short, is a law that requires the payment of prevailing wage rates to all laborers and mechanics that work on federal or federally assisted construction contracts. But what does this all really mean, and how does the Davis-Bacon Act apply to your project? The Davis-Bacon Act of 1931 was passed as a way to encourage the growth of the labor market while preventing falling wages during the Great Depression. Today, the DBA ensures that laborers and mechanics are paid decent wages, which builds skills and improves productivity. While the Davis-Bacon Act applies to wages paid during the construction phase of a project, it is important to keep Davis-Bacon in mind while developing and honing your project budget in the design phases of project development. Now, let's talk about the DBA's requirements. The DBA can be summed up in one sentence. On-site laborers and mechanics who are working on federally assisted construction contracts must be paid locally prevailing wages plus overtime and be provided fringe benefits weekly as determined by the U.S. Department of Labor. Let's break this down piece by piece and go over each of the key elements. On-site. The DBA only applies to work done at the site of work. The site of work is defined as the physical place where the construction actually takes place. It does not apply to work performed at a factory to make a part that is being used for the project. Let's keep it simple. If the construction work happens at the work site, the DBA applies. Laborers and Mechanics the DBA applies to laborers and mechanics who are construction contractors and subcontractors. Apprentices, trainees, and helpers are not explicitly covered under the Davis-Bacon Act, and they are not required to be paid the prevailing wage rate. They are permitted to work on DBA-covered projects, however. The DBA also does not apply to design engineers or other professionals involved in the project, even if they visit the site of work. Federally Assisted Contracts any construction project that receives federal assistance falls under the authority of the DBA. That means if a project receives a federal grant or loan, it must comply with the requirements of the Davis-Bacon Act. Locally Prevailing Wages Wage determinations reflect the prevailing wages and benefits paid by the construction industry in a specific locality for a specific skill set. We will talk more later about wage determinations. Fringe Benefits Fringe benefits are non-cash forms of payment for work performed, such as life insurance, health insurance, and vacation, holiday, and sick leave. Fringe benefits are a component of the locally prevailing wage. Overtime. Laborers and mechanics working on DBA-covered projects must be paid overtime pay, which is time and a half for any hours worked in addition to the 40-hour work week. Workers earn their friends' benefits for all hours worked, including overtime hours, at the rate in the wage determination. Weekly. Laborers and mechanics that work on DBA-covered projects must receive their pay and French benefits once per week. U.S. Department of Labor. The U.S. Department of Labor is responsible for DBA regulations and investigates DBA compliance issues. It also develops the wage determinations for each locality. Also, to ensure that laborers and mechanics are aware of the DBA and how it affects them, the requirements of the Davis-Bacon Act must be posted at the job site. This is often done by placing a poster where workers collect their pay. So now that we've built up our understanding of the requirements of the Davis-Bacon Act, let's drill down into wage determinations. How does the Department of Labor determine the prevailing wage rates for each locality? The Department of Labor develops wage determinations which reflect the prevailing wages and benefits paid by the construction industry in a specific locality. To do this, it uses surveys and statistical information about the wages paid in the locality. Davis-Bacon wage determinations are available at the Department of Labor website shown on the screen. These wage determinations are further classified by the type of construction called the schedule. That means that the laborers and mechanics are paid different rates based on the type of construction they are doing. So what types of schedules are there? 
There are four different schedules or construction types under the Davis-Bacon Act. First, there is residential construction, which isn't funded by FRA grants or loans. Next, there is building construction, which includes stations, maintenance facilities, and interior building work. Then there's highway construction, which consists of elements like roadways, sidewalks, parking lots, and paths, which are common with some rail projects. An example would be a project to improve pedestrian access to and from a rail station. Finally, there's heavy construction, which is a catch-all category that includes projects generally of a public works nature. Most rail projects fall into this category. For example, according to the heavy construction wage determination for Washoe County, Nevada, dump truck operators must be paid at least $19.37 in wages and $5.06 in fringe benefits. If there is not a wage determination schedule listed for a particular job on a project, contact the project sponsor for more information. Project sponsors can contact their FRA grant or loan manager with questions. Now that you know the requirements of the Davis-Bacon Act and the basics of wage determinations, let's discuss the roles and responsibilities for ensuring compliance. There are three major roles in ensuring DBA compliance. There is a large federal role in ensuring that the Davis-Bacon Act is followed. The U.S. Department of Labor is responsible for the DBA regulations and investigates DBA compliance issues. As we mentioned earlier, the Department of Labor is also responsible for setting the wage determinations and ensuring that they reflect the prevailing wages in a locality. As the grant or loan making agency, FRA advises project sponsors of which schedules of rates apply to their FRA funded projects. FRA also performs oversight to make sure the proper wage determination is applied. To do so, FRA conducts on-site visits and desktop audits. For on-site visits or routine audits, FRA sends its staff to the project to verify compliance with the DBA. For desktop audits or remote audits, FRA requests paperwork from project sponsors to ensure and document DBA compliance. The project sponsor plays a big role in following the requirements of the DBA. Project sponsors are responsible for conducting on-site interviews with laborers and mechanics, conducting payroll spot checks and reviewing related records, reporting potential violations, and maintaining full documentation. The project sponsor is ultimately responsible for these activities but may delegate them to its agent. The on-site interviews with workers that the project sponsor conducts should include questions like, are you being paid weekly? Are you getting your fringe benefits, in particular health insurance? Is information about the Davis-Bacon Act posted on the job site? The project sponsor should document the results of these interviews. FRA may request this information to verify DBA compliance. Payroll spot checks are reviews of payroll records for the laborers and mechanics working on a project. These spot checks should verify that workers are being paid weekly, that the proper wages and fringe benefits are being provided, that those fringe benefits are up to date, and that overtime is being paid. The results of the interviews, payroll spot checks, and any potential violations that are discovered should be documented. Speak with the FRA grant or loan manager to get information on how to document this information. Project sponsors should report potential violations to the FRA grant or loan manager or to the Department of Labor. Laborers and mechanics can report DBA violations either to their employer or to the Department of Labor's Wage and Hour Division. Project sponsors should check with their FRA grant or loan manager to determine how often the interviews and payroll spot checks should be conducted. That was a lot of information. Let's take a moment to review some of it by going through a quick quiz. Question 1. True or false? Wage determinations reflect the national average wage paid by the construction industry. False. Wage determinations reflect the prevailing wages and benefits paid by the construction industry in a specific locality for a specific skill set. So the wage determination is likely different in different parts of the country. Question 2. True or false? The DBA only applies to work done at the site of work, the physical place where the construction is actually happening. True. Work done in a location off of the work site does not fall under the regulations of the DBA. Question 3. What schedules are associated with the following types of construction? As a reminder, the four construction schedules are residential, building, highway, and heavy. 
In this first image, we see a sidewalk being built from the main road to a rail station. Highway construction consists of building roadways, sidewalks, parking areas, paths, etc. Therefore, image one is highway construction. Don't forget to make the path ADA compliant and check out our video on ADA compliance. The second image shows a new rail station being built. This would be classified as building construction. In the third image, we have the construction of a mainline track. Heavy construction is the catch-all category that includes projects generally of a public works nature. The construction of a mainline track would classify as heavy construction. Finally, we have the construction of a parking lot at a rail station. As we noted before, parking lots are classified as highway construction. Question 4. Let's sort out the roles and responsibilities when it comes to the Davis-Bacon Act. So who are the actors in DBA compliance? Right. There's the Department of Labor, the Grant or Loan Making Agency, in our case the FRA, the project sponsor, and the workers. Now, let's try to match these roles with the responsibilities they each have under the Davis-Bacon Act. Let's go down the list, starting with who can report potential DBA violations. Right. This applies to three entities. FRA is obligated to report known violations to the Department of Labor. The project sponsor must report known violations either to the Department of Labor or to the Federal Railroad Administration. And finally, workers can report violations directly to the Department of Labor or their employer. Who conducts on-site visits and desktop audits? The grant or loan-making agency, the FRA, conducts on-site visits and desktop audits to ensure DBA compliance on FRA-funded projects. And who conducts on-site interviews? The project sponsor, or its delegated agent, is responsible for conducting on-site interviews with laborers and mechanics. Who develops wage determinations? Correct. The Department of Labor develops wage determinations based on locally prevailing wages. And who ensures that the proper wage determination is applied? Absolutely. As the grant or loan-making agency, the Federal Railroad Administration ensures that the correct wage determination is set. And last but definitely not least, who conducts payroll spot checks? You've got it. The project sponsor is responsible for conducting payroll spot checks. By working together, the Department of Labor, the Federal Railroad Administration, and the project sponsor can ensure that Davis-Bacon Act's requirements are met for your project. For more information about the Davis-Bacon Act, please visit the following web pages. Thank you.